We all wish we could bring our Disney vacation home with us, right? To have that Disney feeling every day? Well, why not start your day the Disney way with a Disney blend from Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. With over 23 varieties to choose from, from the French Bistro you find in your resort room to the Yachtsman Steakhouse and Gico, of course, and now Joffrey's newest Disney blend, Le Cellier. Why not start your day with that Disney magic? Order yours today at joffreys.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Once the monorail in front of us moves a safe distance away, we will resume our forward motion. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, resortloop.com, the holiday thon uh, day two, I believe it is. Is it? I'm not even sure. Tim Scott's not here. He is uh, busy. Uh, he had to run out and get, uh, I believe, my Christmas present. Not too sure. I'm hoping. Anyway, no, he's uh, he's very busy getting ready for the rest of Holiday Thon, and uh, we hope you guys uh, will enjoy it. Uh, hope uh, you liked listening uh, to uh, our good pal Len Testa talk about some stuff. But uh, since it's just me, I decided to invite my son Bobby along. Hi, Bobby. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we, we have something really important to talk about and exciting to talk about, at least for me, because I'm such a geek. Uh, and that is the new Star Wars movie, Rogue One. We just saw it. Uh, it's been out for about a week now. We're not going to give any spoilers, so you don't have to turn off the, uh, the podcast. You can just uh, hang out and uh, uh, listen. We're, we're, gonna, we're not going give, to give away anything. So uh, don't worry about that. But we just, we had to talk about this. It's such a good movie. Yeah, it is. What did you think of the movie, Bobby? Uh, I loved it. Like, it was uh, it was really funny seeing your reactions to, <laughs> to a lot of the things. But uh, I really liked the characters. Like, it didn't have the impact that A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back or any of those ones had. Yeah. But I think that was just because I didn't grow up with Rogue One. Right. With but, Star Wars, right. right yeah, right. like, yeah. well, I grew up with Star yeah. Wars, you know, yeah. but I didn't grow up with, like, I didn't, like, know those characters as a kid. Right. But I right. think a lot of the kids, like, you know, coming up and seeing The Force Awakens and then seeing Rogue One, like, they're... You know, they're going to yeah. really love these characters. And I love the characters, too. They just don't have the same impact as Luke Skywalker or right. Darth Vader, you know. Well, I got to tell you, uh, and Bobby's right, I, I was I was just freaking out. I got to tell you, <laughs> yeah. throughout the movie, I grew up with uh, Star Wars. For you kids out there, it was just called Star Wars when it first came out. There was no uh, Star Wars. It was Episode Four, True, but it was just called Star Wars at the theaters. It wasn't Star Wars A New Hope. And then the next one, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. And that that happened, but not Star Wars. The first one was just Star Wars. And so um, to, to see this movie, and again, no spoilers, but you're going to see if you're a huge fan of that very first Star Wars from back in the 70s, like I was, you're going to see a lot of... A lot of old friends. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I would get so excited. I'd be, I'd be you know banging on Bobby's shoulder saying, oh, you know, because yeah. uh, that's somebody that I recognized from the original Star Wars um, episode four. So uh, very excited to to see this movie. And uh, what now I, I saw it. I saw the original Star Wars when I was 14 years old. Yeah, I saw it for 13 times. <laughs> OK, that's how much I love that movie. I am ready to go back and see this movie again. Would you see this movie again, Bobby? Yeah, I would just to pick up on all like the little things. The little things. Like all of the like kind of cameos and stuff and appearances and references to all of the other movies. Right. right. And uh oh, and then uh just like I don't want to give anything away, but just the last like act, like the last segment right. alone. Right. I would pay full price just to see yeah. that one ending part. Because, like, when I saw that part, I don't want to give anything away, but when I saw that part, I just felt just, like, so overwhelmed 
with yeah. emotion yeah. seeing like one of my favorite characters on screen. It like, is, yeah, it's, it, it's it, a, it was really overwhelming. It's a very powerful, uh, powerful scene. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you know, holding your breath to see, uh, that type of action yeah. in, in, in that movie. Uh, I can't wait to go back and see it as a, um, I'm going to try and watch it as not a an original Star Wars fan that saw the movie 13 times. I'm going to yeah. try and go back and see it and see if the movie is good just by itself. Would you say the movie is good just by itself without having the the crazy fandom like I have for the first one? Uh, Yeah, I think it's a good movie by itself. I mean, it doesn't compare to A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. But that's just because nothing can really <laughs> compare yeah. to A New yeah. Hope or Empire Strikes Back. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch like a Star Wars movie and kind of know more about the universe and have that kind of explain to you how uh, the events of the first three Star Wars, not the prequels, because the prequels never right. happened. Uh, <laughs> if you want to know spoken the, like a true star wars fan yeah if you want to know the how everything came into play and how all of these characters became who they are you know you kind of got to go back into the past so if you watch rogue one it's like everything kind of becomes clear to you like how princess leia got the plans and right like how the why the like the imperial star destroyer is pursuing the uh, Corvette at the beginning of New Hope. Right, so it explains right. everything and it explains just ties all up of all of the loose ends. And it's a real satisfied feeling because you know there's no, you know, right. Uh, right. Nothing that you can really be angry about. I would movie. say that, I would definitely say that the film, and I, again, I'm going to go back and see it again. So uh, I'll let you all know about whether I, f- I feel this way after I see it a second time. But I think it definitely holds its own. Uh, I think Felicity Jones as uh, Jen Erso played a fantastic role. Mm-hmm. She did so well in that role. Uh, great role uh, for uh, for women because it's a very strong, powerful role. Yeah. Um, and there's really it's not it, there's no you know romantic tie. It's just a, a good uh, uh, movie showing a strong female lead, which yeah. I, I thought was really good. Um, we have a couple of favorite. Um, characters if you will in the movie uh k2so the robot Uh, he i love him because he's like c3po if c3po wasn't so stuck up like he's always (laughs) angry and like irritated at every he's he's like the angsty three c three three cpo c3po (laughs) c3po i can't even Talk. It's early. We're doing this early. <laughs> yeah. We we just saw the movie last night, so we're still a little bit of juiced about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. T- K two is. I- I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna say. And I love R two D two. Love C three PO. Love BB eight. Mm-hmm. Thought he was yeah. fantastic. K two in my for me as a Star Wars geek trumps them all. Yeah. I think he is fan. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's really hard for uh, producers and directors to, like, add life to something that doesn't have it, like a robot, you know? Like BB-8. Like, right. BB-8 had so much life when it wasn't, you know, a living thing. They did the same thing right. with... Uh, uh, R2-D2. Was, R2-D2, uh, yeah. yeah, and C-3PO. He had, he had and now with, with uh, K- K-2-8? K- K-2-S-O. K-2-S-O. Like, they made him more human almost more human than some of the uh other right. characters absolutely absolutely um oh, our other one of our other favorite uh, characters was um uh and i'm gonna try and uh it, pronounce this name shirat Im- imwe he was the uh the the blind uh oh guy. yeah he is like he's like Daredevil. If any if any of you watch uh, Marvel's Daredevil oh, on yeah. Netflix, he is like the Daredevil of Star Wars, and he's I like him because he wants to be a Jedi. Right, right. He, he like has that kind of right. like desire, like every Star Wars fan has. Right. Like I want to be a Jedi. So like he's a real like devout follower of the Force right. and stuff, and he just wants to be a Jedi so bad. And I really like that about him. And then his his buddy too, uh, Baze uh, Malbus. Yeah. He was really good. They made such a good team. Mm-hmm. Um, 
This is not your, you, you know, this is not a typical Star Wars movie, though. No, no, because it's not. At, at, you're going to find, and again, I'm going to try to do this without any spoilers. But at the beginning of the, the very, very beginning of the movie, it doesn't start out like a Star Wars movie. And at first, I was a little disappointed in that. I thought, well, that I want it to start out just like all the other Star Wars movies. But after reflecting on it, I think that it's good that it didn't start out the same way because they didn't need to lay the groundwork. I yeah, think. and it's its own movie. You know, it's, it's own, not right. part of the the trilogy or the, right. you know, the new movies that are coming out, like The Force Awakens. It's its own, you know, separate right. movie. It doesn't right. need really. A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back or The Force Awakens to right. be its own movie. So it doesn't quite start out the same, but give it give it time, folks, because it. Uh, you had said, Bobby, that it's a little bit. There's a, some confusion in there uh, with the characters. Yeah, and- it's really fast. You don't. Uh, it's very fast paced in the beginning, which I was kind of like hesitant about that, and like at first because I didn't really know what was going on but as the movie goes on you start to understand these characters and things right, start to become right. uh, clear to you you certainly so. get you certainly feel for all of those characters yeah. every one of them uh, including and I don't think this is a spoiler but the um, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, Bodhi Rook who is the uh, the em- Imperial the cargo shuttle pilot, pilot. yeah yeah um, you know, he he is the one if uh, and, and this isn't really a spoiler because everybody knows what happens if you've seen any of the Star Wars movies. He's the one who sneaks out the, the plans to the Death Star mm-hmm. originally. Some things happen and some other things yeah. happen. And again, I'm trying everything I can to not spoil this for you. But uh, it just you you really feel for this guy because mm-hmm. he's not trusted at first it's it's thought that the you know what he's doing is is the empire he's a plant and and they're it's a trap yeah and um so you this guy you you really start to to like this guy too Mm -hmm. um and really all of them you know um so great uh great cast just an international cast and uh here's here's what uh the director uh gareth edward want you to take away from this movie to me the success of this film is if 10 20 years from now i'm walking down the street and someone crosses the road and they've got a t-shirt with k2 on it or a death trooper or gin or whoever it is or whatever it is it's like if you see that that's when you know you did okay like when it when the characters in our film like infiltrate you know pop culture and 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 people don't want to let them go like they carry them for the rest of their life like that's what happened to me with star wars so so we're just trying to do that for the next generation. So he's he's like you know he's a Star Wars fan himself. He wants you to feel like he did about all the old Star Wars movies. Yeah. When he first found them, which I think is fantastic. That's the kind of uh, of director you want. You don't want somebody that that isn't real familiar and they have to go back and yeah they want to put their own spin on it and all of that yeah. stuff that was something i was afraid was going to happen with jj abrams because he never directed a star wars right movie right. before so i was afraid he was going to add his own like personality in there and like when you're dealing with a franchise that big and something that's so important to so many people you Absolutely. don't really have room to throw your own personality in you have to be dedicated to the fans and give, you know, the fans what they want. You can't right. think about what you want to put in it, right. which I really right. respect that. Uh, just it, it's a good uh, good film for. Uh, I think it's a good film for families. It's not uh, over the top as far as any violence. Uh, yeah. I did I, I did notice something that I was a little confused about. Maybe you can help me with this because you're you're big into the whole. Uh, uh, Star Wars world yeah. online. Yeah. And I'm sure the online community is going to go crazy on this. The Stormtroopers got better at shooting. And then... Yeah. So I I, noticed- I, they were really good. And then when you move to New Hope, they're really bad. Well, so- I heard... I, I didn't read the article, but I saw a headline that they fixed the Stormtroopers' helmets or something like that okay. on Twitter. I, I don't know the, right. the right. context of it, but that... <laughs> I oh uh, I also like the Death Troopers, the guys in the all black. Oh yeah, those were like oh, yeah. scary. They like, were they were they almost were, Darth Vader like scary. They were tough guys. Yeah, yeah. They, they they were pretty spot on. 
So uh, it again, uh, I think that the movie uh, builds up really well. Yeah. Uh, it ends really well. It ends the way it has to end. Mm-hmm. Uh, for all of you Star Wars uh, geeks out there like me, not you necessarily know what I'm how about. you want it to end. <laughs> it's not how you want it to end, but uh, it certainly ends the way it had to end. Yeah. I'm sure had there not been a new hope, it may have ended completely different. Mm-hmm. I think you would have seen uh, a completely different ending. Uh, but again, uh, Gareth Edwards doing what he needed to do which was uh, really stay true to the the Star Wars franchise. I thought he did a a fantastic job. Yeah, I also liked how uh, in the film it kind of blurred the lines with the Rebellion. Because you start to, like, realize that the Rebellion is just that, which means that they, like, target Imperial officers and they, like, you know, they take them out. They, like, assassinate them. So it kind of shows that the Rebellion... Like, they're still the good guys. Right. But they're doing what they have to do to get rid of the Empire. But it's a war, yeah. Yeah, they're, it is. A, it shows the grittier side of right. of the actual war with the Empire. It doesn't right. show, like, the Jedis and the, the New Hope. It shows yeah. what they're going through and how weak yeah. and helpless they feel. Absolutely. And I, I really like that because... I always thought that they made the rebellion look kind of stronger than what it was, but right, it's right. just as uh, disorganized and, as and scattered. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because there's uh, and again, not to give away too much, but there's there's different factions of yeah. the rebellion. So you've got you've got the rebellion even fighting among themselves as to how to proceed. Yeah, there's in, like split in, radical groups right. along with the core rebellion right and i thought that was cool to show that it's not just them fighting the empire it's you know little factions and uh um fringe groups in in the solar system so as a as a star wars geek i gotta tell you i absolutely loved this movie i loved all of the uh, again all of the little uh characters that came back yeah uh i loved seeing that that just that that made the movie even more real for me um but here's what here's what uh felicity jones uh jen orso says uh about the movie you're literally you are you become a rebel i think that's what's exciting about it as an audience member you're going to feel like you're in the rebellion and i can't agree more when you're sitting there you feel like you're a rebel yeah you, you are rooting for these guys you want to get in there with them and and you know fight the fight with them yeah and uh it just it's very very exciting it's it's like the feeling that you got during uh say the force awakens when ray gets out luke's lightsaber right it's like you want to be a jedi you want to fight you know kylo ren with right. ray it's the same feeling but towards the rebellion you want to grab a blaster in one of those weird hats with the goggles on them <laughs> and run out onto a beach with at at shooting at you. Right, it's, a, right. it's a great, you know, feeling to have. It yeah. makes you feel like you're yeah. part of something bigger than, yep. you know, just watching yep. a movie. It is a, it is a, a good standalone movie. I'm, I'm going to say without seeing it the second time, but I will, I'll be seeing this multiple times, not yeah. maybe not 13 times, <laughs> Because I'm not 14 anymore, but uh, multiple times, I'm sure. So, uh, big thumbs up for uh, Star Wars, uh, uh, Rogue One. I can't wait to go back and see it again. So, yep. uh, any last words, Bobby? Uh, it was a great movie. I really enjoyed watching it. Uh, I actually met up with some friends after I watched right, it. Right, right. Uh, they got really mad. They just wanted me to leave because they were afraid I was going to say something. <laughs> uh all of them loved it too. Uh, I loved it, especially since I've grown up with Star Wars, and I can't wait to see it again. There you go. So uh, that's all I've got, folks. And uh, Tim will be with us on uh, the next show. And uh, for everybody here at uh, ResortLoop dot com, we just want to thank you for listening to Holiday Thon twenty sixteen. And uh, we got a lot more shows coming up, so uh, stay with us. You guys know where to find us on uh, social media. As Tim would say, uh, you've been listening to The Gateway to the Magic. And I always say, see you, everybody. (laughs) 
with four theme parks, 25 resort hotels, hundreds of dining and shopping locations, and seemingly innumerable special events and ticket options, planning a trip to Walt Disney World can seem overwhelming. That's why the ResortLoop.com podcast has teamed up with People Mover Travel to help you get the most magic out of your Disney vacation. People Mover Travel will walk you through every aspect of your next Disney trip, from ensuring you get the best discounts to Fast Pass Plus and dining reservations and so many other things. Best of all, there is no fee for their service. That's right, you get your very own expert Disney vacation planner at no cost to you. For more information and to request a free, no-obligation quote, visit peoplemovertravel.com.